Hi, I'm Seamless. And today I want to talk about something that's not really NFL basics. It's more like a production basics. So I guess this is production basics. And the topic of today is phase cancellation. Phase cancellation is something that's present in almost everything anyone does for almost every kind of sound design. It's present whether you like it or not. It's kind of inevitable given a lot of things. But let's talk about what it is. So to demonstrate it, I'm going to record myself a sine wave just because. Sine wave get. Let's grab a bunch of it, put it in here, and use the wrong tool to move it. There we go. Let's uh, pitch it down a bunch so that it's bigger. Yeah, we can see what's happening. So phase is essentially just a change in the starting position of a, of a sound basically uh, that that description is kind of a, kind of vague but um practically here's pretty much what it is it's when you do that stuff like this i'm changing the phase of the waveform starting point of it that kind of thing and if i change it against a copy of itself some things happen see as it turns out you could add together waveforms just like you can sort of anything else a waveform has both a positive and a negative peak. We call it plus one and minus one. Although these aren't uh, axed, so it's not really plus one or minus one. There we go. Now it's plus one and minus one. Now, it's plus one and minus one because the center position, the zero crossing, the center, is called a zero crossing because it's at zero. No help to at that position at that time. And really what a waveform represents is the motion that is being sent to a cone, a speaker cone, to move, to move air. And that's how we hear sound, you know, it creates waveforms. The speaker cone moves out, moves back in, moves out, moves back in, that kind of thing. And it creates a tone, it moves air, and we hear the waveform. <clears throat> so what happens when we have two of them together? We add them together. And if it's, if it's identical, then it just becomes double the waveform, and double the amplitude. But if it's slightly out of phase, which is what we're doing right now, it, gets, it doesn't add together quite as much. And if it's 100% out of phase which I guess I could do by, uh, I, I clowned it, right? Yeah, so reverse polarity, boom, out of phase, 100%. 100% out of phase, when we play it, we get silence. And this is because it's canceling out. It, this is cancellation due to phase, otherwise known as phase cancellation. And this is something that doesn't happen very often. It's not, I mean, when this this will happen, like um, if you ever, if you ever, if you ever, if you have speaker monitors and you accidentally route them out of phase, like you put the positive and the negative and the negative to positive on one of them and you did the other one correctly and you sat in the middle and stuff sounded really weird. That's because there's, it's sending you opposite phase in the, in the left channel and the right channel and it's actually possible to put a, a mono channel, a mono signal through both channels and sit in a particular position and not hear anything because it's phase canceling. And it's really trippy when you do that. But um, it's kind of rare that you would you would have you would run into a situation where you're, you, where you're unless you're doing it on purpose for a specific and like express purpose of trying to cancel out something to leave something else out. Like that's actually something that happens quite a bit. In fact, one of the most ingenious uses of phase cancellation I've ever thought of, ever heard of, is uh, what TRS cables do, what balanced um, audio cables do. I was explaining this. This was explained to me in college, and I might be thinking about it wrong, but look it up if I'm if I have talking about it incorrectly but essentially what happens is that um for any length of cable um some noise can be introduced into the signal if it's not shielded properly or even if it is shielded properly the longer the cable is the more noise that there's going to be and so what a balanced cable does it has you know the two prongs at the top of it the, the two different the two different uh, rings and you might be thinking that's a stereo cable and it's not what it is is that um there, the polarity is shifted in certain in a certain way at the beginning of the end of the of, of the of the uh, cable, so that the signal goes through, and then the signal gets canceled against itself in such a way that the noise that is generated on both channels in the same polarity gets canceled out, leaving only the original signal in pristine condition. And it's freaking genius. T balanced cabling and TRS cables are fucking cool, um, but. That kind of application has is a very utilitarian kind of thing. It's not something that you would really be using in sort of general, basic sort of sound design. However, phase cancellation due to something being not quite the same pitch against itself, a la a re-space, is something that happens quite often. So let's demonstrate what happens when we do that. I'm going to change the pitch a little bit. 
Yeah, okay. Oh, how big was the original lens? Like, yeah, whatever. Okay, let's have a look. So here we can see that it, it alternates between getting completely out of phase to being completely in phase. Like so. And if I were to actually record this, <laughs> it's very loud because uh, we added together a bunch of different different waveforms, but but let's normalized. These two when added together equals this. And here we can see the result of, of rhythmic phase cancellation, otherwise known as beating, which is kind of a weird term to give to that, but apparently that's what it's called. And um, what's happening here is that right, if you look at the stack again, right here is when it was almost completely out of phase, and so we have almost no amplitude. The amplitude is diminished when it's out of phase like that. And here we have when it's almost completely in phase, and the amplitude is maximum. And it alternates in between. And because while they are different pitches, this is one pitch, this is the other pitch, and the pitch does not change between the two as they're playing, the rhythmic cancellation remains the same speed pretty much forever. And we can see this happening in action whenever we open up a sine wave. You can look at it in EQ. And I play a note, and then I play another note. I play them together. Voila, phase cancellation. Uh, so that's essentially what that's what phase cancellation is. And the most obvious use of this is when we have you know a saw wave, and we use it to make a reese. That, that's a, a very the very most most basic application that I've seen being used in that kind of thing. But this the the phase cancellation is actually used in a lot of stuff, and it also has to do with what the idea of a harmonic is. When people think about the term harmonic, it gets thrown around a lot, especially to add a synthesis, and, but also in terms of things like saturation. Like they, we say, okay, cool, when we have like a, a, a saw wave, or a sine wave, rather, right, and then we add some saturation, what happens is that we get, we get harmonics. Harmonics are added. But people tend to get in their mind that like harmonics are just tones that are higher than the original the original thing. But as it turns out, what a harmonic is has to do with phase cancellation. Because if you play a note, you play another note, they're going to phase cancel if they're in the same channel. If it's a single channel, by the way. Because if I did left and right and I play them together, the phase cancellation would actually happen in the air in your own brain. It would happen, but it would happen less because it's in, in two separate channels. But... Um, what this is essentially saying is that if I were to play two you notes, know, but play play the interval wider, the farther away the interval, the faster the effect happens, and certain multiples of the effect lead us to say that actually, as it happens, when you're playing two notes, you're never actually really hearing two notes. You're just hearing the phase canceling between one note and the other note really fast, and you know, for the purposes of songwriting, it doesn't really matter. You just doesn't do that. It's fine, but. If you wanted to, if you wanted to know how you could play two notes that are not phase canceling, you play harmonics, and harmonics are multiples of the of the fundamental tone. Fundamental being your bass tone. So uh, octave, for example, the first harmonic in the four year series uh, is it's, it's, it's double the fundamental tone. And what this is essentially saying is that. Um, the waveforms fit perfectly in, inside each other. Unlike this, would you see that they don't fit? Uh, there is multiple the the multi, there's multiple zero crossing kind of failure happening. But if it were, if I were to have a clone of the original, make unique, and then double the pitch, that did weird things. Why did that do weird things? That's funky. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's bring you down 24. Okay. And let's bring you down 48. <laughs> okay, visually it's kind of hard to do, but essentially what this what this means is that there's no phase canceling between harmonics because they are they're they're not going to add or subtract from the original well, they're going to add. That's pretty much what's going to happen. It's going to add. But here's the, th here's the thing. 
Um, the harmonics are being, there are multiples, and you can and as you go higher up the octaves, the first one being first one being an octave. I'm playing audio clips. Can you do this? Audio clip. Next one being a fifth, an octave, third, uh, fifth again, I think, and then an octave. And each new octave has double the number of harmonics to the point where um, you start to not have real notes anymore. They're not real divisible notes, but they are still frequencies being divisible by itself because you can just double and double and double off into infinity, that kind of thing. And um, there is actually a thing that happens when you have all the harmonics in this particular this particular doubling phenomena, and that is a saw wave. This is what happens when you have all the harmonics. You get a saw wave. And it's kind of like the heart of additives of the system. I actually covered this in another video called, uh, it was the FL Basic series on Harmer, and it's about additives of the system. Um, I might have talked, I might have talked about phase cancellation. I have mentioned phase cancellation in a lot of, a lot of my videos that have to do with sound design, but um, I've never really addressed it as like a basic idea. And this is actually kind of because I thought everyone knew what this was, but um, I've had a lot of students who came in for private lessons that when I kind of started off asking about, okay, cool, phase cancellation is not something they've ever heard about. And... It's it's this is one of those things where I know you've used it. I know you've seen the effect of it, and I know you like, know what it is. You just have not have had a name put to it or, or identified as an individual phenomenon. But now you have, and a lot of stuff that you do from the resing aspect that we mentioned to the idea of a super saw all has to do with phase canceling, because when you have a harmonic and you have all the all the pitches of all the harmonics. The second any of it gets even a little bit out of pitch, it starts to phase cancel with it with itself. And if you play copies of it against itself that are different pitches even slightly, then you get a lot of phase cancellation. And the idea that we demonstrated with the sine wave and the phase canceling that happens there, that, that exact phase cancellation happens in the higher harmonics only a lot faster. And when you have a saw wave, which has a whole bunch of harmonics, if you have nine voices together instead of the, just the two that I was playing, the phase cancellation, while still rhythmic, it happens so that the, the actual rhythm is such a long thing because there's nine voices competing each other that um, it just sounds like a kind of a random, un, unknowable wash of sound, which is what you want when you're doing a super saw. But what happens, what's happening is that you have a lot of phase cancellation. <laughs> happening in the higher frequencies a lot of motion a lot of sort of self-modulation in the spectrum and that's what's happening there and this is also why um a lot of bass resampling and a lot of like um and like a phaser for example uh we use that we use that um we use unison and we use the pitch differencing and we use the phasing to do all that in bass uh modulation because it creates additional movement in the spectrum via phase cancellation um and that's just a lot of cool stuff and understanding this extremely basic idea, I think it's super duper important for everyone who has any who wants to have anything to do with sound design because it's involved in a lot of it. It's a kind of a very a very core central tenet of the idea of subtractive synthesis. And subtractive synthesis is involved in every kind of synthesis, even if it's FM, even if it's RM, AM, additive, like it's wavetables. It's all subtractive is still involved in it, if only just because of this idea of phase cancellation being involved in it as well. So it's it's cool to have your head involved in that and in with the idea of phase cancellation from the beginning because then you, you, can, you can apply it intentionally as opposed to fighting it and not knowing why because sometimes you do. So um, a lot of that was based on a lot of what I just said about all that and tried to demonstrate personally here was based on my own experiences plus some research and a little bit of actual schooling. And it's possible that some of the stuff I just said was total bullshit. And I apologize if that's the case. And if you know that what I just said was bullshit, feel free to correct me. I will integrate that into something later to try and like make it better. Because I have actually done that in the past. Some of my oldest tutorials um, were built. Like a lot of the information that I was saying in them was just straight up not true. Or missing some of the, some very important things. And people corrected me. And that was very good because that means that now when I talk about it, I know what I'm talking about. And then I can tell it to you and then you'll know what you're talking about. And the last thing I want to do is I want to spread misinformation about stuff. Um, so by all means, correct me if you know better because I want to tell people the truth of things. So they can know the truth and they can have the power of space.
But if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.